G'day, welcome to the video. In this particular episode, what I'm going to talk about is the minimum things that you would do to your motorcycle if you're going to prepare it for a track day. So if you have a sport bike like this BMW S1000RR, there's a few things that you need to do. I mean, you could get the bike and ride it as it comes from the factory out on the track, um, but I think you'll find that this information will be quite useful to you on the minimum things that you should do. And uh, there's five of these. They're low cost, they're not going to cost you a lot of money, and you would do these before you would go and think about putting full exhausts on and engine tunes and ECU flashes and things like that. So, as I said, there are five things. Let me run through all five. Number one, you would replace the factory brake pads with a set of performance pads. On this particular bike, we replace the factory ones with a set of Brembo SRs. And the reason we do that, and, and by the way, they're not full-blown race pads. They're particularly designed for high performance, but not the extremes of you know, super hard racing. The reason we do that is what's going to happen is when you're out on the track, you're going to be riding a lot harder, accelerating a lot harder, and also braking harder and more frequently than you would do on the street. And the factory pads, which were designed for normal commuting and street riding, aren't going to be able to put up with and maintain their performance at the higher temperature ranges that is going to be created in the discs. So you replace those pads with a set of performance pads which have a higher friction coefficient at higher temperatures. And it's this generation of heat that you have to factor into the performance of the motorcycle. So get yourself a set of performance pads uh, as the number one thing that you would do when you hit the track. Second thing to consider is the replacement of the screen, right? And you'll see that in most cases when you buy a sports bike, it's got a you know, pretty low screen, small fairing at the front, but that screen is so low, what happens is at high speed, there's a lot of buffeting from the wind. It's not so bad on the street. You know, you're doing 100 kilometers an hour or dare say a little bit higher than that. Um, it's not quite so bad. Um, naked bikes work fine without a screen. But when you're out on the track, so for example, if you're doing you know, 300 kilometers an hour down the main straight of Phillip Island, that little low screen is gonna result in your head getting buffeted by a lot of wind. And as your head, anyone who's ever experienced that knows, it's very hard to see as your head's getting buffeted around. So what we do is we go to the endurance screen, and the endurance screen is different in that it's got a bubble in the center. It goes uh, a fair bit higher. Every MotoGP bike that you look at, every World Superbike race bike, uh, you'll see has an endurance screen on it. And the reason for that is it gives you something to tuck behind. Now, the endurance screens, they're not very, that expensive. You can get them for less than $100, you know, through eBay and Amazon and things like that. And you can also get them in a couple of different forms. You can get a tinted one and you can get a clear one. I leave the tinted one on the street. I don't know, I just like the aesthetics of it. But when we hit the track, we replace that with a clear one. And the reason we put a clear one is we want to be able to look clearly through the screen because when you're doing high speed down the main straight of a racetrack, you're going to be tucked down here looking through there. So uh, I just want the clarity of the clear screen. So uh, there you go. Second thing, um, endurance screen. The third thing to consider is replacing the factory levers with a set of folding levers. And a folding lever is like what you see here on this BMW. These are the HP version, which is an optional extra that you can get attached to the BMW sport bikes. And a folding lever is simply a lever that folds up and you'll see it will rotate 90 degrees upwards. And uh, it stays down, right? wobbles around, but then you can push it back up. The reason we put these on here is when the bike falls over, and invariably it's going to happen on a racetrack, when the bike falls over, um, it's most commonly what's going to happen is the controls are actually going to hit the bitumen. When the controls hit the bitumen, if the bitumen hits the levers, it will put pressure on these, and if you don't have a real high quality set of levers, it's going to break them off. Right? And there's nothing worse than a broken lever on the racetrack if you don't have a spare, because now you've lost that particular control. And if you've lost that control, you're not going to be allowed to go back out on the track. So a set of folding levers aren't that expensive. What happens is when the bike falls over, the bitumen pushes the lever, it just folds up, you just come back, you push it back down, and you've still got the control of the motorcycle, which means you can probably continue with your track day. So uh, that's the third thing I think about, a set of folding levers. Fourth thing set of rear sets and we recently made a video on this how to set these up um, how the reason why we put these on here and to give you that piece of information about from that video in a nutshell it's simply this a good set of rear sets positions your feet and legs in the correct position to be able to assist you so that you can attach properly 
So the standard foot pegs a little bit forward, a little bit down, right? Sometimes your legs a little bit low to be able to ride the motorcycle at speed properly and attach correctly to the motorcycle. So we put a set of rear sets on, gets our leg in the right position, and then we can attach to the tank or through the lower body much more effectively. The reason we want to attach there is we don't want to be putting excess weight on the, on the controls of the motorcycle and uh, affecting the way that the bike reacts to its wobbles and steering rate and things like that. So we attach ourselves correctly through the lower part of our body. And uh, rear sets is the first part of that. The final thing and the fifth thing is a continuation of that conversation and that is to, to put a set of grips on the, the, or tank pads or tank grips, whatever you want to call them, on the side of the tank. And in this case, you'll see on this bike, we've got the stomp grip version. We've also tried the easy grip. I like them all. But the reason we put those there is it just gives you some traction on the thigh and the knee area um, on the tank. And anyone who's got a highly polished metal tank that doesn't have much shape to it knows it's very difficult to kind of grip that motorcycle when you've just got this whole beautifully polished paint. So we put these on here and they just allow you to get much more grip and traction on the side of the tank so that you can attach more effectively. And as I said, they go in combination with a good set of rear sets. So uh, there you go. But whatever brand you choose there, uh, you know, it's, it's whatever suits you. Like I said, I've got these stomp grips on here. I just like the real coarse nature of the stomp grip, but Easy Grip's a really good product as well. So uh, there you go. Five things to think about. Replace the uh, brake pads with a set of performance pads. Put an endurance screen on your motorcycle. Put a set of folding levers on the bike. Set of rear sets. Could cost you anything between $250 and $2,000, uh, depending on what your budget is. And the last thing, put a set of uh, tank grips on the sides of the tank to assist with your attachment. There you go. Hope you enjoyed that video and got something out of it. I'll see you on the track.